Hey guys, it's Kokodo, back with another Dope Talk, a short podcast for hosting people with dope talents. Today we've got a TF2 alumni and butt streamer tag. You want to introduce yourself, man? Hey, uh, well, I mean, you did a lot of it there. Uh, my name is Tag. I used to be a professional TF2 player. I know, shocking. Um, yeah, now I, uh, I pretty much uh, do content creation on YouTube and I stream. So yeah, I started playing TF2 when I was I don't know, like 14 or 15. No, I mean, I started when I when I played TF2, it was like literally back in like, I think 2011, 2012. And that's when it was sort of in its heyday, I want to say, I mean, before it really started picking up. But it was also like when they just started the whole free to play mechanic for it. Yeah, so I, I used to I used to play professional TF2, as weird as that sounds. Uh, I've been on, uh, I think, uh, technically three sponsored teams. Um, so, like, for me, it was kind of funny, because back in the day, uh, my friends used to talk about playing, like, Halo 2 competitively, and they were talking about getting Ooh. on the teams for that stuff. Yeah, it was, it was weird, because, like, we were just a bunch of kids, like, you know, with Xboxes and stuff, and, like, like getting picked up, I think, for, for professional esports, quote-unquote, was a really big deal, you know? Yeah, um, wow, that just brought me back. I mean, because, because speaking on that, Halo was the game that got me into first-person shooters, and, like, the, and, and into, into gaming, um, it, it was, Halo. Halo was definitely the first game that I I got I got attached to, and I played the the hecky out of it. Yeah, <laughs> I played I played the the Xbox version, and then I got Halo PC, which uh, you could play online, and I played oof, I played so much of that. No, and then and then you moved on to TF2. I'm assuming either because of the free to play aspect of it, or like how did how did you pick the game up like before you actually started getting serious with it? Well, so I'm I honestly can't really remember how I got how I got into it because um it was back when when G4 TV was on and you know cheat was a thing in X Play and it was around when Halo not Halo uh, Half Life Two was the big thing. Everyone was talking about Half Life Two, how amazing it was, how great the graphics were, how great the physics engines were, and everything like that. And I was just I was captivated by it. I was I was so interested. So yeah, I um I, I got the Xbox version of Half Life Two. Um, that game came out on the Xbox, <laughs> and uh, it, because I, I didn't have a computer good enough back then to run Half Life Two, and I know that sounds ridiculous now. But and then I uh, the Xbox 360 came out. I got the I got the Xbox version of Half Life Two, and right around then they announced that the Orange Box was coming out for the Xbox 360. That was my first touch on on Team Fortress Two, actually. Yeah, same same for me. Yeah, I I, I ended up getting the Orange Box on the Xbox 360. And back then, I I didn't I got it for Half Life. I did not expect to get into TF2, and I played it on the Xbox, and I was like, oh, wow, this game is a lot of fun. And I I finally I finally got a computer that was good enough to run, um, you know, the Orange Box games, and you know, I I knew how to play PC uh, first person shooter uh, games on PC from Halo PC, so I just I got the Orange Box. I got a TF2 on PC, and yeah, that's where I started off from. And like it's the they don't have any of the hats or the items I believe I think it's just all like the the basic stuff which is it's kind of like a weird ghost town you know I I think the demo man might still have six pipes yep. or something like that <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know <laughs> his grenade launcher actually makes sense yeah no that um, I, that bugged the crud out of me when I, I started playing recently and I was like this doesn't make the sense design wise and then someone <laughs> had to explain to me I'm like oh that's stupid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I definitely think you and me have a lot of very similar um, origins when it comes to gaming. It's just the stuff that we could pick up at the time, and like, like, like I, I was just excited to get into something like TF2 because it was like I didn't have to spend any of my like hard-earned, you know, grocery boy money. I, I got into TF2 when you still had to pay for it, so I, I did, I did have to put my my grocery boy money into it, but I only had to do it. Well, no, that's not true. I, I didn't have to do it once because it came out with with cosmetics <laughs> yeah. and then suddenly you're spending like eight ten dollars on like items even though they're like really not oh, worth it and you're like wow you know? <laughs> my mom got mad at me <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say though so like how did how did you move from i would say like playing the game casually to like a more serious position with it whether it was like i guess you're streaming or like the more comp play stuff that you started to do i used to play on a on a server community that you might have heard of that other people might have heard of uh I, it was called uh, TFP. <laughs> the uh, the yeah. Hmm. I'm wondering what that is. I actually have heard of this. <laughs> I, I think it was called. I think it was called like the Frag Pound or something like that. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> <laughs> I I was a bit of a rambunctious youngster on that server because also like th this is around when I was 15, 16 years old, 17 years old, and. Um, I don't really know what it is about it, but when I get super interested in something, I want to know. I, I want to. I want to know how it works. I just want to learn more about it. And in, the more you learn something, you know, the better you get at it. 
there, there are a lot of people on that server that started to think that I was cheating. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> and and also, I mean, to be fair, I you know I was 16 years old and I I was I had a little bit of a rambunction. You know, I was a 16 year old kid. I I never wanted to put anyone down or say anyone was bad or anything like that. But I was I was just annoying. You know, I had binds that. You know, I said, oops, every single time I got a headshot kill. Like, oh, that's, just, that's just unnecessarily annoying. And on top of that, everyone just like, hey, oh, my God, it's it's that kid with the sniper again. Please get him out of the server. So I was I was running a, a thin rope for a long time. And the admins finally found a reason to, to kick me out of there. There there were people in that server that I, I started becoming friends with that also, you know, wanted to wanted to play the game competitively. And they're the ones that actually got me into, into that scene. I played my... First season of competitive back in TWL. I, you know, so someone just asked me, Hey, do you want to play on our team? And I was like, Oh my goodness. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah, fine. And it was like the most serious thing I'd ever done in my life up to that point <laughs> for being a 15 year old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Once again, context here, I was 15. <laughs> and yeah, uh, from then on, uh, Team Fort TF2 lobby became a thing, and I started playing a lot of that. And I, I have a I have a thing about, you know, if, if I want to do something, I want to know that I'm doing it right, which, you know, there's, there's pros and cons to that. So what I would do is because uh, I was so nervous about playing in, in, you know, competitive settings that I would spend hours on end in training servers and in, in like TR walkway or uh, TR um, uh, ooh, rocket shooting. And just, just, just like, just practice my aim, practice my movement, practice, you know, getting used to the physics of the game, and and figuring out, you know, how how fast people move, depending on how you shoot them, where, and you know, just prediction, getting used to the the game engine, which is pretty serious stuff for for like a, <laughs> for for someone who's just casually, I want to say play casual, but somebody who's like, you know, learning to play the game a bit more seriously. Like, I've never thought about any of what you're talking about, so it's like, oh. <laughs> Well, yeah, at the time, at the time, I also wasn't thinking that. I was just thinking about just like, okay, I've been playing the game for a while. I never thought in my mind that I was just like, you know, oh, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta perfect it for becoming esports or becoming better at the game. <laughs> I, I, I just wanted to, I just wanted to know what to do in that situation. I just wanted to to learn or just get more familiar with the game engine. And it turns out I did that way too much. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, I overprepared for Team Fortress 2 lobby. <laughs> uh, <laughs> turns out it's it's not that serious. Uh, fr from there, after playing on Team Fortress lobby, TF2 lobby for a, for a while, uh, one of the people that I used to um, like get paired in, in lobbies with, uh, his <laughs> his name was Booty. <laughs> But but it was like it was like D W. He spelled it weirdly, and I didn't understand it until like three years later. <laughs> that uh, that's what I was saying. He he just messaged me one day and just like, hey, we have one of our teammates missing from a game. Can you can you fill in for him? I've only played TF2 lobbies. I've never played anything else. And just like, I don't care. It's fine. You can just play in it. And that's how I got on my first actual team. Um, it was Team Dwid, I think it was. It was like exclamation point D W I D, and uh, we played in T T W L again. I think it's a uh, Team Warfare League. That's what it's called. Yep. Yeah. Um, Team Warfare League used to have T F two tournaments where if you won, you got a mouse pad. I, yeah. <laughs> For a fifteen year old, that's cool. <laughs> this guy got a sponsor uh, for our T W L league, which was listen at the time. This is the lowest <laughs> league of Team Fortress two. Like no one, barely even no one knew what it was. I don't even remember the name of the sponsor, but I do remember that they were supposed to give us a free can of dust off for our computers. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, like, I, I even 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 me back then when I was younger, I realized, okay, this is kind of cool, but also. <laughs> Kind of lame, you know. It's like, oh yeah, I am sponsored. Oh yeah, who are you sponsored by? Uh, they, they gave us some dust off. That's it. <laughs> that's cool though. Like you know that you had a company that that would literally give you something just for playing a game in your spare time. You know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, th theoretically, the company would give us something in our spare time for playing the game. We actually never tried to get that dust off. It, it was definitely a thing that I was, I was, I was proud of it when I was a kid. Yeah. Like, like looking back on it, it's like, what? <laughs> what in the world? Um, but you know, as as a kid back then, that was that was 
that was something that I, I could like tell people, you know. Yeah, I'm man. playing on a team and I can get a free can of dust off <laughs> playing a video game. So I guess from that point, um, you decided to keep moving on with uh, doing, I guess, comp plays. And did, did, did you start like finding ways to extend your content from there? My first YouTube channel, I was still, I was uploading videos of games on it. Um, like I was uploading, I, I pointed a camera at my television screen and I recorded uh, the, <laughs> the sick frags I got in Halo 3 online. And that's kind of how my channel started off. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a very like media focused person. I've always been interested in cameras and photography and like, you know, the, the, the best way of conveying a thing is showing it, you know, show, show versus tell. So this is why I've always been attracted to the idea of recording your footage and recording things. You never know when something crazy is going to go on or, you know, you never know when you're going to have a story to tell and what's better, like what goes better with the story. So I, I was playing these hours and hours and hours and hours of, of, of games and uh, tons and tons and tons of wacky things have happened in these games. I'm sure you've, you've had. Oh, yeah, no moments where i've just felt like wow how did this actually happen like this way because it feels it feels too perfect the way that game works sometimes despite how chaotic it is i mean I, so go, going back in it i still remember when i was playing halo pc when i was a, a small <laughs> little 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 lad that there, there was a warthog driving across me on blood gulch and i shot a rocket launcher like way far in the distance in front of that in front of that warthog and the warthog ran smack dab into it and it <laughs> blew my mind and i was just like oh my god i can never tell anyone about this <laughs> no one's gonna believe me <laughs> yeah, Damn it. exactly no one's gonna believe me so that's how i got into youtube i started just recording you know footage from me playing games and uploading it to my channel I was just like oh yeah that was cool let me let me upload this so that i can watch it later or share it with my friends and I just kept doing that, and somehow it has, it, it has snowballed into 76,000 subscribers, I think. It turns out that, you know, things that you find interesting yourself, um, you know, people can find it interesting as well. Absolutely, man. And so if, you, if you're interested in something and you like it, you know, just, just keep doing it. This is kind of interesting because I guess back in the day, it was a little bit harder to get a uh, hold of a lot of these sorts of equipment for recording. Like you think oh, about yeah. like cameras and like capture cards and, and all the other stuff. Was it, would, how did you really get started with that stuff? So, whew, wow, yeah, this is bringing back so many memories because it's it's hard to believe because my, my roommate and I, have, I've talked about this for a while. Um, my, my, my roommate works in, in, the, in the live graphics industry for esports events. Uh, so he does this day in and day out. Um, at a very, very high technical level. A few years ago, you couldn't buy a capture card. Oh, no, not at all. <laughs> you know, the, the only capture cards you could get would barely work, and you were lucky if you got them to work. And now today, there's so many, like Razer has a capture card now that you can buy. So, you know, b back in the day, we I, I used a video camera that I pointed at my TV screen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, um, I, you know, I use Fraps. Uh, but then, you know, Fraps takes up tons and tons of, of, of hard drive space. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think I never ended up using Microsoft Video Editor because even as a child, I knew that interface sucked. Uh, I, I used like some magic movie maker thing. I, I, you know, I lucked out because TF2 has, has the demo recording option where you can, you can just type in uh, in the console, you know, record, blah, 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 whatever name you want it to be. And then the game records itself for you. And then you can, you through console commands, you can tell the game to then render out whatever it recorded, um, which is, you know, it's still being done today. You know, the demos are a huge thing about Team Fortress 2. That's how, that's how all like the, the jump videos and, and, and frag videos and everything are made because it's, it's super high quality. So I, I got into that and, that and that's how I started making my YouTube videos rather on TF2. And then I started branching out to other games, um, but I honestly, I think I still used Fraps then. I'm trying to remember, you know, because OBS didn't exist and Exploit didn't exist. But it's kind of funny because those programs exist because of, I guess, the demand for streaming and people like wanting to find better ways to do this sort of stuff. Yeah, because I mean, so, you know, capture cards used to be a thing where if you wanted a capture card that worked, you had to put down a thousand plus dollars and you had to get like a... A, a black magic, you know, uh, the capture card that, that was meant for, you know, professional lines of work in order to, you know, I just want to record this onto my computer. I was, this is so hard. I always would think that as a kid as well. I, I remember buying like Hoppage TV tuner um, 
ages ago to try to record Xbox footage to my computer, and I was just like, I just don't understand why, you know, you you plug it into your TV, how come I can't plug it into my computer? <laughs> yeah, now it's, now it's definitely that simple. <laughs> and it's a lot easier now, because you can go online and look something up, like, why is this not working for me? And then someone has mm -hmm. been through it, and they'll be like, all right, this is what you're doing, get your shit together, you know? It feels... Capture cards are a very recent thing. I bought a, I bought a capture card from a Japanese seller two years ago and i it was an internal capture card i plugged it into my computer and it did not work with my computer because my cpu was too new my motherboard's uh chipset was too advanced it was too new so there were no drivers for that capture card to work on my computer at all it took me months and months and months and months of well not months that's i'm now being exaggerating but uh, it, it, took, it took me like, uh, you know, two months of just like looking through it. I'm just like this, you know, this cannot be the case. You know, like there, there's there's like three capture cards on the market. This one has the best reviews. The other two just like you can pray it works and it doesn't work on a new motherboard. And the company does not want to come out with new drivers. So it does work. It was a Japanese company as well, uh, which means that you can't return it. And I still have it, and it still doesn't work. <laughs> no! Yeah. I hope you didn't drop too much cash on that. <laughs> oh, man, I, I don't want to think about it, honestly. No! Uh, I, I, I still know exactly where it is right now. I'm shooting daggers at it right now with my I'm eyes. Sure, I'm sure it's like a cautionary tale just like to make sure you understand where your investment is going and to like do your research on, on uh, whether or not a product's going to work. Yeah, well, I mean, speaking on that, there was no way to do research on the product if it worked because I was one of the few people in the world that bought that capture card with a new chipset that came out. Oh, no. So I was probably one of the five people that figured out that terrible terrible uh you know arrangement but you know speaking on this um at the time only usb 2.0 capture cards were really a thing for external which meant that you had to do a lot of annoying things to get it to work properly on a live stream yeah and in in this case you know uh, since it was running through usb 2.0 usb 2.0 doesn't have a fast enough data data throughput there was a delay in the capture but it created a lot of issues where you would have to delay your microphone and delay your webcam for how much of a delay that the capture card had to process the images so so that you weren't reacting to things but be before people were seeing them on your computer it was a pain in the ass and i never liked it you know you could do it every single time you, you stream you had to like get the timings done you had to do clap tests yeah 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 um yeah, and and like snap tests to, to to try to sync the audio and the video with also what was going on in the game. So you have to do like three tests and sync them all together. Um, and now three, we have USB 3.0 capture cards that um, it's instantaneous capture. You can play it right off your computer screen. And uh, God, I'm so thankful. <laughs> yeah. No, it's cool that they they definitely boosted that sort of uh, I guess software for for streamers because like i said it's a very important thing for a lot of people now just, just from you know the audio quality and a lot of streams you know if you if you if you watch like high level streamers or you know popular streamers these days you know everyone has a has a fancy microphone and the you, you may or may not know it but you know some of them also have you know super fancy cameras as well um and but you know definitely the the, the most noticeable thing is probably the audio uh which is you know it's it's kind of crazy thinking about how this industry blew up so quickly um because it's it's literally the live broadcasting industry but you're just doing it yourself you're just you just you're making your own tiny little studio in your own apartment you know you have something like what broadcasting for tv and that's been out for like years and years yeah. and the only reasonable way that you could honestly get on tv was like if you happen to talk to someone who was in sync with the broadcasting company who happen to be able to make a program and then pitch the program and then get all that stuff together. Now you can literally just go onto YouTube, Twitch, uh, any sort of streaming site, and then you can get a partnership. You can get like, you know, basically people paying for you to, to do their advertisements and all that stuff. You can even get ad revenue based off of ads. And it's like, whoa, that's, that's amazing stuff. Like the broadcast industry is years and years and years and old. And, you know, when, when we were talking about the equipment and every, and like how the equipment that you could buy, when you were uh, when when you were first starting off 
was super expensive and super limited because all of that stuff is for professional broadcast work. A, a you know, top of the line industry has just entered everyone's homes in the last three or four years. You're you're very much your own agent for a lot of these things. Like your, your uh, success and relevancy is all based on how you present yourself. Like whether it's through like the uh, quality of your videos or the way you carry your personality and branding. And it's such a very different way of looking at media compared to uh like you know like i said tv and all that stuff because it's like yeah suddenly you you're your own pr manager your producer your um it's it's definitely cool that you you know you have everything to yourself you know to 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 make your own image to make your own content but it's it's definitely a double-edged sword for one you have control over your own brand your own image what you do what you work you know if you, if you don't want to do something, you don't have to do it. If you want to make something, uh, you know, you, you can make it. If you want to play something, you want to make it be on something, you can make it. But there's also that level of, you know, okay, so what do I do next? Or, you know, how do I improve, uh, you know, what, what idea would, 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 you know, would get popular? You know, what, what idea would, you know, get, will, will bring, will bring eyes around and everything like that. And then on top of that, you know, you're, 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 you're making your own content you're producing your own content, you're, you're editing your own content. It's, it's, it's a lot of work for one person to do. Yeah. Um, you know, you, for, for me specifically, you know, I, I try to stream four hours a day, which means then that I have to go through that four hours of content that I just made and edit it and go through it and, you know, curate it and pick bits and pieces of, you know, what was good so that then I can edit it together for my YouTube channel. You know, I, I'm creating content every single day that I also have to manage every single day and of course, you know, sometimes a stream can be 10 hours long. And that means <laughs> I've, I've made 10 hours of videos that I have to go through. So it's like, you know, on one time, just like, oh, yeah, I'm having so much fun. And then you're, you, you sit down and you end the stream and then you look at the file size and see it's 100 gigabytes. And you're like, <gasps> no, it's, it's hard. And then especially like, I think going back to the whole point you made, and that's like hours of content that you just got to skim by some parts and, and some of it you really want in there, but you have to be like, all right, what's going to sell a lot better? What's going to be a lot funnier or a lot more um, intriguing to someone who picks up my video? It's, it's always tough because, you know, I, I don't even want to think about how big of a backlog I have of, <laughs> of content that I have to go through. I, it's, it's terabytes um, of footage. You know, it's, at some point you have to realize I can't, I can't do all of this. That's, that's being unreasonable. Um, two, you know, it's okay if you, if you take a break or anything like that, because it's, it's very easy to overwork yourself because you think that you have to keep working, keep putting out content because you're your own boss. Um, and, and since it's like such a, since it's like, because you're working out of your, out of your room all day long, it's hard to gauge what everyone else is doing. You're looking at everything everyone else is doing as well. You, you have so many other people doing what you're doing and it's so easy to see what they're doing. Um, that you're just like, oh man, should, should I, should I be doing this instead? Or should I be doing it like, like this person or, you know, like this person gets so many viewers doing this or, you know, how, did, how did they do it and everything like that? Honestly, you just have to keep reminding yourself that it takes time. It takes work. If you, if you rush yourself, if you stress yourself out on it, then why are you doing it? For me personally, once again, I started this for fun. I didn't start this for, you know, uh, becoming famous, um, <laughs> Uh, I, I, I started this because I, I wanted to keep around, you know, the, the funny and fun memories and crazy memories of the games that I was playing. And, you know, it's kind of snowballed into this. But for me, I always have to keep reminding myself that, you know, yeah. I do this for fun. Um, if I'm getting stressed out, you know, just take a step back and, um, you know, take a reasonable step back because you know, I still have to pay rent. <laughs> but, you know, um, you know, take a step back and reevaluate what I'm doing here. Just silly content that's, you know, game focused. The, the thing that I really love about streaming the most is just hanging out with the community that I've made on my Twitch channel. I've never been a script writer. I've always been a like, oh, I'm going to play this game. I'm going to have fun with it. And oh my God, well, I guess I'm putting that in the video. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> just, just, just a spur in the moment, just like these crazy natural things that end up happening. I want everything to be, you know, natural reactions or anything like that. That, that like that like editing philosophy that I have or you know content creation philosophy I have uh, is is easily shown in the the Gmod videos that I make. I have a series I have a series on my YouTube channel where I go into Gary's Mod RP servers and I just watch. <laughs> 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 you know, I, I just I just explore the environment. I and and here's where the slippery slope comes in where 
I know that a lot of that content already exists online, but it's I, I find it to be overwhelmingly neg negative where, you know, people go into other people's servers and, you know, they try to they try to troll. They try to be disruptive on purpose or, you know, they, they, they try to ruin the fun. And then they, you know, they get the reactions of people getting frustrated at them, which is, you know, I don't like that, you know. Yeah. I, if I if I'm going if I'm going to these people's servers and they're having a good time, you know, then just let them have a good time. You know, like if if it's something that they're interested in, let them be interested in it. And I'm just gonna watch it from an outsider's perspective. And I'm you know I'm going to try to understand, you know, what where where the fun it is. It I honestly have a few times been sucked into it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I I I played I played on a, a Star Wars RP server. Oh. <laughs> for the entire time, I was just like why I, I don't understand you know everyone's just pretending to be a start or a stormtrooper you don't have lightsaber you don't get to get in like super super big fights i realized three hours into that server that first of all i was still on that server for three hours <laughs> <laughs> second of all i was i was undergoing an rp training server to get into one of the squad battalions in that server that they made oh trying to figure out what do you do in these servers so i was like okay there's a squad battalion they're doing training for something so if i get through this training i can finally figure out what they're doing <laughs> and i realized just like oh, no, wait hold on a second this is how everyone else is feeling in the server you know like it's 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 harmless fun um and it's 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 fun seeing how people have fun and you know entertain themselves and that's what I kind of like having my my content about. That's the kind of community I try to make with my with my Twitch server. To some extent, I feel like you have a closed environment where a lot of people develop behaviors, and maybe that's quote unquote their safe space. But it's it's hard getting into it because when you play games like say League of Legends or TF2, you run into a lot of people who are very um, centered around the idea of hate speech. <laughs> and yeah, for yeah. some people, that's that's like it means nothing. It's but at the same time, there's there's a certain cultivation of, of the way they, they talk about it that is is kind of upsetting. I do I do feel as though it's a little bit unfair to say, you know, this specific community has, you know, just the worst problem in every community because everyone says that about every game community. You know, I've, I've heard people say, you know, oh, man, the, the TF2 community is the worst community. And then you hear someone say, oh, the League of Legends community is the worst community. I think they're a raw problem, uh, but it's that, that's just unfortunate nature of the Internet and everything. And... Uh, unfortunately, it's it's one of the reasons why I actually stopped playing uh, competitive TF2. The community started uh, like like going going a route that I no longer felt comfortable with. I once again I I never got into competitive to be a winner or to you know to trash talk or anything like that. I got into competitive because wow these people are good and it was it was it was a way for me to push myself it was just fun you know it was it was I, i'm assuming that, you know other people felt that way as well but other people also you know started getting egos um inappropriate comments everywhere with with my boyfriend who's been playing a lot of uh tf2 recently he he like i think says to me every other 30 minutes he's like someone called me this or someone called me that and it's like why? <laughs> you know? What is what does that add to it? I think there's a certain sense of intent. I, I've I've never understood of you know the 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 idea of going to the worst word to try to mean like it's definitely a factor of oh you're not supposed to say that and I said it. <laughs> um, I I just I just never understood it. Like you know, or no, no one's saying you know don't get mad because you know, I I definitely you know get frustrated at games as well. But when I get frustrated, I call people like. A big old dummy the, the worst part about it is for those people that are on the internet saying that you know the, the more you use it or you know like i didn't mean it or you know, i was just upset don't understand the implications because if you are using these words that everyone knows you know the meaning behind them and the history behind them that doesn't matter because people that do use those words still and people that do still mean them for their actual literal reasons are still hearing other people use them. Just because you yourself do not believe or are not using it for the literal meaning, you are still using the word. They, they don't hear what you're thinking. They hear, they're hearing what you're saying. I think people don't really understand. It's, it's not about you. It's, <laughs> it's, it's more important than that. It's like, I was nervous that I couldn't pull that outfit off, but I see that that person's pulling that outfit off. <laughs> well, you know, let me try that outfit. It's the same <laughs> thing. <laughs> you know, like, like, 
people that were nervous about it and people that actually feel that way when they hear other people saying it they start to feel like oh well if other people are saying that must mean that it's it's okay i can say it too and and the, the hard part is you have like a community of gamers that are very young like i mean these are people who are like 10 13 years old like you were not even 10 years ago who are just picking up this game and they see it and they're like well maybe if they're saying it i should parrot it so i can fit in with everybody else that is the thing that i i think that i really dislike the most is when is when content creators and streamers that you know are very popular say that everyone knows i was joking or you know when people like remind them that they are an influence and then they say oh no i'm not you know no. huh <laughs> you know like you, you know, like i i understand that i'm an influence on my stream because everyone on my stream starts saying but now like on the regular yeah people from my stream are wearing hats that say but on them you you have a lot of power whether you have like 300 subscribers or like 300 million subscribers, you you are influencing, you know, people who follow you. You are you need to be aware that when you have followers, a lot of times they're very much younger and they they, you know, are impressionable. Like you were saying, when you have people saying these things on streams or in like their videos or wherever else, They'll probably listen to it and be like, yeah, that's something I can say myself, you know? It, it's just, it just really pains me when people are just so nonchalantly saying, oh, yeah, everyone knows I was joking or, you know, everyone won't do that. That is absolutely not the case. You you have an influence over your followers. I, I want to make sure that the influence that I put out is, you know, one that's a positive, like, just vibe and just real you know like be nice <laughs> don't be a bad boy and you have a, many eyes on you you know you have that you know want to talk to you daily yeah and it's it's stressful and it, it's in you you go into it thinking just i have to be the best that i can be every single day i like my stream and my and my community to be as real as possible so you know if i'm not having a, a good day or you know if i'm if i'm tired or if i'm you know feeling a little bit upset then the, the way I'm putting it is that, like, people think that you have to act like you're perfect. After you're playing, like, competitive for a while, like, what kind of stuff did you start to pick up? You know, everyone knew my content for being Team Fortress 2. I was the professional Team Fortress 2 player. People would just, like, their eyes would glaze over whenever, you know, I would upload another game. After I was pretty much done with competitive Team Fortress 2, I would start playing, you know, games that I wanted to play. And everyone was just like, what are you doing? You can, why aren't you playing GF2? It was like... It's frustrating <laughs> for a content creator that has, you know, is known for just one thing. It's, you know, it's, it's frustrating when you try to go and do something else. I mean, I'm sure many stories like this with like, you know, actual like actors, you know, like an actor does comedies and he tries to do a drama and everyone's like, what are you doing? Huh? So in that sense, I, I guess it's like that for content creators online. It's when you are, it, it's, it's definitely a part of content creation, especially um, where you can become known for only creating like one type of thing. What you have to do then is just, you know, put your head down and, you know, just keep, keep creating content and remember like why you kept creating it. Um, it, it was pretty stressful. Uh, but you know, I, I realized that once again, like, okay, I need to think about why I started this in the first place. And it was for me to have fun. And it was for me to hang out with people that I enjoy. So if there are going to be people in my community that were only here because I played one game and get upset at me for playing anything else, then those aren't people that I want in my community. I think I think the important thing is if you are one of those people that's stuck within the uh, the market of something that's like you know you're based on whether or not it's popular. If your content has the kind of passion and uh, integrity that you know you expect out of yourself, then you could probably keep moving on to something else. You know, you can move on to other things, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, one of my favorite content creators, uh, John Wolf, he had a market of explicitly bad horror games for a while. And he actually <laughs> got sick of it. He was like, all right, guys, I'm going to make a second channel. I'll make other stuff. I'll make content that represents the original content. But at the same time, I'm going to make content that represents the stuff that I want to do because I want to try new things. And I do not think in any aspect should you feel limited. I, th I feel like as long as you're representing how you feel and you're putting out the same kind of passion and commitment, you'll do okay. And that's that's honestly like the most important part about it is the enthusiasm behind it. Because once again, if people see that you are, are enjoying yourself, if you're enthusiastic about something, then, you know, it's it's contagious. You know, they they will be enthusiastic and, you know, and it might take a little bit of time finding those people that are interested in the thing in the same things you are or like, you know, like seeing you like interested in, in what you like. 
but it will it'll happen and you just keep you just gotta you just gotta keep working towards it you know locking yourself into only one thing only works for so long you know it just you just start to hate it <laughs> and, <laughs> and you know if you're a content creator and you hate the content you're making uh, it's gonna bleed through your content's gonna suffer for it if it's something that you know you, you really depend on um you know trying to make that decision on okay do i do i do this to make the money or do i you know not buy lunches for a while and do this thing that i actually really want to do um you know it, uh, i'm not, not going to say that it's easy making these making these decisions or anything like that but they are definitely something that needs to be considered if you you know if you're ever in a situation like that how do you how do you divvy that up personally like how do you find time to play your own games and then you play the games for other people because you said you like stream four hours a day this is something that i've been struggling with a lot recently um i i i think the last game that i played on my own time was night in the woods oh man um yeah, when it first came out, and I, I had to speed through the game because I had a stream to do the next day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, experiencing something on your own versus experiencing something with a large group of people watching you is definitely, you know, <laughs> very, very different experience. You need to take a break. Experiencing or ingesting some other thing on your own, on your own quiet time where you can, like, process it without, you know, someone else interjecting or anything like that is important, and it can help your workflow and help your mental state. So, so what would you say it is for you when it comes to to creating the images behind your website? I'd say it's been a, a really like hard part of my channel for a while. I mean, but like like right now, like my Twitter my Twitter banner is just nothing. <laughs> 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 you know, there, there there are a lot of streamers out there, like you know, like Star. Well, Star is an artist. I'm pretty sure he's he's done most of his own designs. Like he he also has a like, brand behind his name, and it, you know, like Germa, um, the, the germ motif going and everything like that. I, I don't have anything nailed down, but that's why I'm realizing that you know, if I'm just gonna sit around and wait for the like, oh yeah, that's the one idea I need, then it's gonna take forever. Your branding has a lot to do with um the core concepts behind what you enjoy. And for instance, my channel, I love the idea of it being a talk show. So I kind of made this talk show setting and I made like a whole idea behind it. Like I would include kind of lounge music and sort of like a very like cool, warm color palette to kind of incorporate with that lounge setting, you know? And I think it's like with any channel that you sort of uh, establish, you just need to understand what kind of content you're creating. And then from there, you can kind of stem out new ideas and vibes um, that might connect with your channel. Because I've noticed a lot of the content channels that don't work are the ones that like don't really have a consistent idea of where where their um, content really lies at at the core. You know, you need a way of connecting with your audience and letting them know that they can come back to your channel expecting the same sort of uh, interesting content every single time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it, it can it can it can be fun. It can be stressful, but. Uh, I, it's gone to the point where, you know, like my community understands, you know, the, the type of things that I, that I find, you know, my type of humor and they like to engage with it as well. So a, a thing that I've been, uh, I've been recently this year starting on, uh, with my community is, you know, I, I've been, I've been more open about being gay and having a boyfriend I already noticed, you know, improvements in my community. And I, I'm, I'm really happy about it because, you know, as we all know, the, you know, the, the, the type of language that goes around in, you know, online gaming, there's this overwhelmingly negative and everything. And I, I realize that once again, like tying into, you know, you, you you have influence over your viewers and everything that I want it to be a positive influence for the LGBT community. Because because also, I, you know, I remember back when I was a kid, you know, back when I was just starting playing TF2, one of the reasons that I, I ever even started playing on the Furry Pound as my first community is because you could be openly gay or, you know, openly, you know, anything on that server. And it was extremely welcoming. And that helped me a lot through you know my childhood and everything like that because I, I went to a private catholic school so you know that 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 really helped me immensely um which is you know why i i really really admire like the, the furry community and everything i want to you know be that support for anyone else that's out there you know i want i want people to feel welcome and have fun in my channel so i, th I just think when you have more people standing up for the stuff they believe in you can push a better agenda so i'm just saying Create the environment that you believe is is comfortable for everyone when it comes to gaming, because it shouldn't be about like you know whether someone's uh, this or that. It should be about how well you play. You know, if someone's going yeah. to put you down for for your abilities, that's fine. But like, don't don't let them put you down for other factors, because that has nothing to do with how you are as a player or a creator or just even a fan. You know, it's 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 all comes down to just who you are as a person. 
And I honestly, I, th I think a lot about that comes from it's just, you know, overwhelming negativity, especially in games these days where, you know, you're playing on teams and someone in your team is just being completely toxic. I, I, th I think it's more of they're just trying to shift the blame on someone else. And, you know, you, you can be justified, you can be right in that, um, or you can be frustrated with that, but also it's a video game. That's all it comes down to, unless you're in comp play, but still, don't be a dick when you're in comp play. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've played on an actual, you know, you know professional team, and... Uh, you know, if you if you do not get along, you do not win. <laughs> yeah, and, and instead of fighting, you know, six people on the enemy team, you're fighting twelve people because now you have, you know, a bunch of other people on your team that you know looking for any any reasons, you know, to to snap at you or you know cut cut you or anything like that. So I guess that brings us on to the Q and A section. So I, I'm gonna start with paralysis poison from Twitter. They asked you what was the inspiration for your butt hat. And that, that's a piece of merchandise that I that you offer for anyone not familiar. Well, so <laughs> okay, so it actually it actually started off with me, you know, coming up with ideas for you know merchandise and everything that's to sell on my channel. I was I was testing out uh, several several outlets that the test text that I just put on everything in general in my entire life is always but. <laughs> so <laughs> I put that on the on the hat. And I got like three of those, and then everyone was just like, "Does your hat just say butt on it?" I was like, "Yeah, it's a test run." And people really like it, uh, especially like parents and stuff. <laughs> uh, I've 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 worn the hat out at like at like a semi fancy like a restaurant. I really shouldn't have, but <laughs> these uh these like group of of moms just came over to me, which is like, "Can we get a picture with you?" Oh my god, your hat says butt on it. They they were very deep in the drinks, but I was um. The way I see it is just it's harmless fun. It's just you know it's 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 my style of humor where who would make that and why that's that makes it a little bit more funny for me. I made a I made a picture of a cat with sideburns that <laughs> has become famous in my community, uh, and I made it years and years ago. So I lost all the files for that. Um, and I'm I'm not a savant in Photoshop. I just I I know enough edit to get around with it. Uh, so you know it's it's super low quality because uh, I did I didn't want to make the transparency and I just found a picture of a cat with the transparency already on on Google, uh, and I, I I slapped it together really quickly and people loved it and people were like begging for shirts of it. I was like okay well I so I had to I had to search for hours to try to find the original picture of the cat again and then I had to I had to search for hours for like a picture of sideburns again uh, that had an alpha channel because I didn't want to make an alpha channel of hair. So I, I slapped those together, but the original picture of the cat is too small to be printed. I couldn't enlarge the size because it, it would it would make the it would make the print really really ugly, and the and the shirt was like, yeah, we can't do that. So what I did, I was just like, and then it gets worse because I lost the file to that picture again. So I had to make it again, and now it's even smaller. <laughs> But there's kind of a charm to like how bootleg it feels, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like exactly. someone's looking at your shirt, like, why did you buy? That? <laughs> exactly. That and that's the thing that I love about it because it's also it's also a conversation piece, you know? It's like, yo, wait, what is that? Because the, the thing that I love about it, it's like it's the just the juxtaposition where, or you know, like the the, the polo shirts where where you have the logo, you know, right at the top around around like the breast and everything. And what if you just what if you just put something dumb there? <laughs> <laughs> How, how long will it take for someone to notice? So um, I had a good question from Diza SSB from Twitter. They asked you, is there any particular reason you didn't jump on Overwatch? Oof, this is this is an embarrassing time of my life. Uh, I I was like betting my entire career on Overwatch for a while because uh, I, I was just like, oh my God, Overwatch is going to be so big and, you know, it's going to be like TF2 and I have to get into it. I have to stream it. You know, I have to like, like, this is my, this is my next TF2. I was like super hopeful for it. And, you know, I, I got, I got caught up in it and I, I thought, you know, it's like, oh, this is going to make me super successful as well. And my God, did I not like that game? <laughs> really? <laughs> no, mm -mm. I tried so hard to like that game. Um, it's it's not like TF2. I'll, I'll, if I go more in detail, but I'll probably make some people mad about it. But I I don't enjoy. I don't have fun when I play Overwatch. And uh, I I was going through a, a patch where I was just like I have to play Overwatch because it's what'll give me the views. <laughs> and I was like, wait, no, I hate the game. Uh, stop, you know, because it's it's bleeding over to, to the stream. So, uh, you know, I I was I was honestly, it's I mean, it's the same when I stream TF2. You know, I get a lot of viewers when I stream TF2. I get a lot of viewers when I stream Overwatch, but I I don't have as much fun. But that goes back to the whole idea that like 
don't care what your content is. If you have a good personality and a good you know format for videos, you're good, you know? <laughs> so yeah. DJ Sandals from Twitter um, says, what do you envision the future to be like for tubers slash streamers in general? <laughs> oh, well, I mean, that's an easy question, you know? For, for me, like what I personally want for my stream to happen is, you know, I'd like for my community to grow. Um, I, and once again, like I, I phrase that specifically, I don't want to become like more popular or I don't want to, I don't want to become like, you know, a top streamer. I would like for my specific community to, to grow in size with, you know, the, the type of people that I mesh well with in terms of, you know, the future for YouTube and Twitch. Wow. That is, that is, un, I, it's really hard to say because probably nothing next for YouTube and another service provider takes over Twitch. Not you can upload videos to Twitch now. About 90% of my videos have been deemed, you know, uh, unsuitable for ads, um, which has been happening a lot. And you know, I have, I have a, I have a video of me petting my dog, and YouTube was like, mm -mm, this is inappropriate. And you know, you have certain people on YouTube making it harder to to, to monetize uh, videos because you know they, they just you have such a, a trained eye on them. YouTube's monetization monetization is just not stable. Whereas you know you have Twitch where you have the you have subscriptions. Where people can subscribe for five or you know ten dollars or twenty four dollars a month if they like your content. It's not based on oh, are the ads good this month or not. It's based on oh, do people like my content or not, which is way more you know it's way more solid. You can subscribe to a content creator to support them if you enjoy their content, and you can also you know get the emotes that they provide on their channel. YouTube's uh, income is all based on what do the people that are buying ads ad space want to see yeah but for but for twitch it's based on what do the viewers want to see you know it's it's not you know you're, you're not you're not you're not getting all your ad revenue from you know coca-cola and then someone says a terrible thing on youtube and it doesn't coca-cola is just like mm -mm, no -oh. so flat street from twitter says what's your motivation for keeping up as a content creator you know because you are your own boss then you have to you have to make all your own decisions and you're never working with another person uh, directly. I mean, if you're like a two man show, then sure. Yes. You know, finding a person to just say, wow, this, like this specific thing about streaming really frustrates me. And, you know, you know, like, 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 like finding a person that you can like relate with vent with is, is kind of hard. So it's a stay at home job. So, you know, you're, you're, you're in your room all day and, you know, looking over footage that you've made and it can really drain on you. It can really get stressful. And I think the most important thing is realizing when you are stressed and why you are stressed and what you can do about it. And that it's also okay to take breaks and step back and realizing that it's like, it's, it's okay that you feel stressed or upset or frustrated or, you know, or anything like that. And make sure that you take care of yourself because you are your own boss. Uh, you can, you can give your own time off. You can, you know, you can decide when you work, you know, be open to that as well. As a content creator, you always have that stress behind you to keep putting out content, keep putting out content, put it, put out as much content as you can. But if you're if you're rushing yourself, if you're killing yourself over it, then your content's going to suffer. To end this all off, I guess, will you ever make a persona? You know, you have Tess Garman doing icons for you, so people are just like, "Man, what's your deal?" Well, I mean, I mean, to be fair, I also have been to like three MFFs, and I went to BFC this year as well. To, to, to put this on perspective, you know, the, the free pound was like the, the first one of the first servers that I ever played in. And it really helped me, you know, coming to terms with, you know, being gay. Uh, yeah. yeah. For for anyone that's been in that server, you, you know, you know, <laughs> I get to I get to see some of like my best friends and closest friends. And also, you know, I get to hold my boyfriend's hand in public without, you know, getting getting looked at or anything like that. Um, so I, I it, they're 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 great events and I have a lot of fun in them. Um, in terms of <laughs> making a persona, I always say that how come chat hasn't made one for me yet? Because way back when we actually made a, and I always get this wrong, a pony OC for the channel. We'll say it for it was for the channel. It was like it was like dark, dark, dark hoof, dark wing something. It was because we we went into a it was, it was back when I was doing one of the Gary's Mod streams and I went into a, a Pony RP server. Oh, <laughs> and, and and so like as 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 an entire channel, we all like you know made a, a custom uh, <laughs> uh, Pony avatar and it, it was like it was like a, a half angel, half demon thing, and someone made fan art, <laughs> fan art of it, 
and you know it was it was just some harmless fun that we had and it was it was pretty funny we we, we bring them back up occasionally but yeah i'm, I'm waiting i'm waiting for that on the uh, on the persona side of things <laughs> it's been cool it's it's a it's been yeah. super dandy and i'm glad tag could uh give give a hoot and a holler thanks for having me